Alrighty then. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how to make things hover in stock KSP. Uh, now stock KSP, I need to put a disclaimer on there because you actually need a mod in order to create these stock parts. Uh, so what I've got here is I've got the editor extensions mod and that is downloadable for KSP. What it does is it gives additional tools in order for you to create things. One of those is the no offset limits. So normally in the default game, you can move parts, you can place parts and you can move them around, right? So we'll do this. Um, put these three on and you, you use these little tools to move them around. So one of them is the angle tool. Turn that so that it's vertical. And then the other one is used to move it. Now in the default game, you can't move parts anywhere. There are default, there are offset limits in the default game. And what happens is with the editor extensions, those go away. So you can place parts pretty much anywhere. And I use this in order to make things hover. So there's two ways of making them hover. There's the static hover where you have buildings and, you know, large spacecraft that hover. And then you've got the dynamic hover. So this would be the static hover where you, you offset, say, a plate or something very far away from uh, the, the vehicle that you want to hover. And then when you launch it, what happens is it does appear to hover even though it's sitting on the ground. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to do uh, with this is to, and this is part of the mod as well, uh, to do the auto strut. So auto strut, rigid, and then move it. And in this case, I'm dropping it way down through the floor so that when this launches and the physics loads, it will appear to hover. So there we go. Okay, so there you see it. It appears to be hovering above the ground, being held on by basically nothing. Oh, and it looks like I've actually have another set of plates down there as well. So now you can use the vessel mover to put it on a high location and really get some fun out of it. Let's see if I can uh, get this to work, maybe. So there you go. Now you've got this hovering platform that you can land ships on or you could use it to make like a Star Destroyer hover. I've done that. Uh, few other things so it's when you uh, when you save the file it actually is a pure stock file like if you were to upload the file to uh, Kerbal X it would be listed as pure stock uh, and that's basically because the way that um, these uh, craft files are coded is that they're just a collection of parts and each part has a location an orientation and an attachment point and that's it so you can make that location and orientation anything that you want and the game will just pick it up because it doesn't really care. So the, the offset limits are set uh, in the default game so you can't do things like this. Uh, but obviously the mod allows you to do it but it will save as a stock craft. So that is the, the static uh, hover and now I'll take a look at the dynamic hover. So I'll, I'll build uh, an example for the dynamic hover just from scratch because it's very, very simple. Um, all you do is you have a tank or a, a, sorry, you have a, a, a plate, a metal plate. And in this case, I'm connecting it to a tank and you take a wheel and basically penetrate it through the metal plate. And when the physics loads, it will look like it's hovering. So in this case, we'll use uh, this uh, Rove Max model M1. They're very popular wheels for this type of thing because they have um, they have a lot of clearance, so you can actually get things to hover fairly decent at a, a decent height off the ground. Most of these wheels will work. I don't. I've got that one to work successfully. 
but basically any wheel will work. Uh, these are some of the best ones. So once again, you need the editor extensions mod because you need the, the no offset limits um, in order for this to work nicely because you, what you need to do is you need to move these wheels around anywhere and sometimes in the default game it gives you a little trouble so you what you want to do is you want to have the wheel penetrating through uh, the plate so that the axis sorry the axle is it the axle or the axis is above the plate right so you want to have that much of the wheel and then you want to drop the plate down to fairly close to where the ground level is so the plates should be the lowest thing on the vehicle and then the wheels penetrate through the plate and what happens is it looks like this in the via in the the assembly building but when the physics loads the wheels will pop up but they'll appear to still touch the ground where they're penetrating through the through the plate so you'll see that I'll I'll do this with the, the rear wheel as well. So the center axis of the wheel is just above where the plate is. And then drop the plate down to the bottom. And now this vehicle, when we load it, it should hover. So we'll launch that. And boom, you see the wheels popped up there. And it will actually drive around like a regular vehicle. Oh, in this case, I'm out of electricity, but it'll drive, uh, but it will appear to hover. And now the real key is uh, hiding those wheels. So creating a design so that you can't actually see the wheels. Now where I got this from, um, I actually downloaded a craft uh, from a person called, a forum user called uh, Space Train One. And I'll take a look at that right now. Okay, so um, this is the hover tank from Space Train One. I'll give him full credit. Uh, this is how I figured out how to make things hover, actually. I downloaded it because I thought it was a great design. And as it turned out, uh, it had all these wheels on the bottom. I thought they were a little clunky at first, but when I loaded up the, uh, the physics, it was hovering around just like a hover tank. So what I've done is I've changed it a little bit, um, updated the design and added a big gun on the front. And so we'll have a, a tank battle. But first I'll just show you how this, how this looks when it's launched. Boom, and there it is. So you can see the wheels popped up underneath and uh, you can actually drive around with it. And I was quite impressed when I when I realized that and actually reversed engineered the fact that the wheels were connected to plates and uh, that's how it all kind of worked. So what I've done now is I've added BD Armory so that it's got a cannon on board and now it's, it's, an, actual, it's an actual tank. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so in order to have a decent tank battle, of course, you have to have two different types of tank. So I designed my own version of this. Uh, it's a, a battle droid battle tank, and I'll load that up right now. Okay, so here it is. This is my battle tank. And you can see I've also put the big cannon, laser cannon on the front. And on the bottom, of course, I've got all the wheels set up. It's a little unstable because it's so high above the ground it's got a high center of mass um, but it works pretty good works pretty good so yeah this is uh, basically the ultimate hover vehicle uh, we'll take a quick look at it hovering and so you can see here it hovers above the ground the wheels pop up and it just looks like a regular hover tank. You can drive it around using the WASD keys. I've remapped my keys so that uh, I've dissociated them uh, from the SAS keys. I've also added some jet engines. You got to be careful here otherwise you'll pop the, uh, the fairing. So that'll help it move around without having to touch any keys. 
doesn't go very fast. Uh, it takes a little while, actually. But it will it'll get going. And of course, I've got the gun on board. So that's got a little uh, the red, red cannon there. Blow stuff up. That's lots of fun. So, well, I've set up a little scenario and uh, so we'll have these tanks battle each other. So here's the save game. I've got these tanks set up. I'm going to take a couple of quick pot shots just to make sure my weapons are all set up, ready to go. And uh, I've got the hover tank on one end and the uh, battle tank at the other. And so we'll be driving these around, shooting at each other. The autopilot doesn't work on uh, ground units. You've got to be flying in the air in order for that to work. So I'll be manually targeting. It's not difficult to do. These guns are very powerful. And the tanks are made out of aircraft parts for the most part. And so, boom, first shot. Yeah, right on target. Kaboom. I think I've been playing around with the settings as well on these, so uh, the guns are extremely powerful in this test case scenario. And it's just a lot of fun to drive around and shoot stuff. Uh, just finishing off some debris there. So that's it. A uh, quick battle. So I've set up a second one where I'm controlling uh, the battle tank. And this one's a little more difficult to aim for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Maybe my uh, mouse pointer's a little off, but... Uh, so, taking a couple of shots. But eventually, all you have to do is get close. The explosion will do collateral damage. And... Uh, right there, that finished him off. Kaboom. And done. So it was a quick little example of a tank battle. Uh, these things don't move very fast and they've got extremely powerful guns. Uh, so it's, a, it's usually a quick battle. Uh, there needs to be better armor in the game. I'm sure there's a mod that you can download that will improve the armor. Uh, these tanks are designed to be uh, played in the Star Wars universe. So they're not really designed uh, to be uh, resistant to tank fire. So now I'm just going to drive it around and uh, do some pot shots around town, around KSC. And uh, that's about it. So there you have it, the hover tanks. And finishing this off. Uh, once again, you can't drive this tank over very rough terrain, otherwise uh, things like this happen. Kaboom. And you're finished. Okay. Take off, eh?